Factorio is a complex game that offers players a canvas for expressing their problem-solving creativity. It's unlikely that two factories have ever been exactly the same. But how many different ways can you build a factory in Factorio? Let's see if we can find an answer to that question by creating a mod that can systematically generate every possible factory. You might not realize just how many possibilities there are. How could we approach this? Maybe we could generate a random entity for each grid cell? Well, that would work for small entities, but not for larger ones. How would we handle rotation? And how can we guarantee all edge cases will be reached? Well, it might help to take a look at an example of a library that contains every possible written text. This is the Library of Babel, a representation of all possible pages of 3200 characters. Within the character constraints, it contains all English alphabet text that has ever been written and will ever be written. In fact, it contains the very script for this video. If you've never seen this before, you may be skeptical, but I assure you it is real and any text you want to find will be here. But how could this exist when it would be impossible to store this much data with current technologies? And how is it able to search through all of it in fractions of a second? Well, it simply doesn't store any data at all. It generates the text on the fly. This implementation of the Library of Babel is essentially a clever application of basic encoding. To illustrate this, let's create our own library. Let's say we want this library to contain every combination of five characters. We'll stick to uppercase, A through Z, and a space, which brings us to a total of 27 unique characters, and 5 to the 27th total unique combinations. A naive approach to navigate to an item in this library is for each of our 5 characters simply generate a random value from 0 to 26 and convert it to its corresponding character. However, there is an issue. We have located our data, but we have no idea how we got here. The navigation occurred within the randomly generated numbers, which we have little control of. So we need a deterministic way to navigate to a particular place in the library. One option would be to enumerate all combinations and simply index to the location. But since there are nearly seven and a half quintillion of them, that may take a while and would also take an enormous amount of storage. Another option is to use numerical decomposition. Instead of generating each of our five character values independently, we can generate all characters together and decompose that value into each of the five characters. Since each member of this library is unique, we can choose a random number between zero and the total number of combinations. Each of these numbers represents one location in this library, then we can convert it into our characters. To illustrate this, let's choose this value. We'll represent it in base 10 to show the conversion process. This value represents a unique location in the library, and to reveal its true value, we must convert it into a base 27 number, and then convert those values into our characters. Bingo! This is essentially how the Library of Babel operates, so let's see if we can apply this to Factorial. First, let's set some restrictions on what will be allowed for our generation algorithm. Factorial is full of tons of different complexities that make for a great game, but many of which will be out of scope for this project. For now, we will restrict this to entities that snap to the grid and can only be rotated in the four cardinal directions. This means no trains or rail because my computer refuses to place any after my last video where I tried to ride a train around the entire map. Go check it out after this video if you haven't already. We will also be restricting each entity's configuration to just being constructed. This means no recipe setting, no inventory, no modules, and no signals. And to make this accessible to more people, I'll also restrict this to the base game, which means no DLC entities and no quality. This may seem like a lot of restrictions, but as you'll see, this is necessary since the number of combinations grows very fast. With those rules in place, let's assume the simplest case for now, where we want to fill an area with wooden chests. At each cell, we can either place a chest or not. This gives our system a base of two, where we'll choose one to represent a chest and zero to represent an empty cell. So for a three by three grid, we have a total of two to the ninth combinations, and to generate one of these, we can pick a number, convert it to base two, and place the chests where they need to go. From here, it's trivial to expand this to more entities. For now, we'll stick to ones that occupy a single cell and cannot be rotated. This filters the size of our entity pool to just 14 plus an empty cell. Let's try it out. To be able to generate and place down these entity combinations in Factorio, I've created a mod that will designate a region to display what has been generated. This mod allows you to place down markers in the corners of a resizable rectangular area. 
which will provide the dimensions for the entity generator. Let's create a 3x3 grid to demonstrate our generation algorithm so far. If we start our value at 0 and increment through each combination, you can notice the pattern is very predictable, since it's essentially counting. To make this a bit more interesting, we can use something called a linear congruential generator to get the next value instead of incrementing. An LCG is a way of generating pseudo-random numbers within a given domain. And when using the correct parameters, it is guaranteed to loop over all possible values before repeating. This will allow us to jump around to some more interesting values instead of incrementing. To add rotation to our generation, we need to assign one of the cardinal directions to each cell. Again, it might seem trivial to pick a random direction for each cell, but remember, we want the generation to be reversible. We need to adjust the way we compute the total number of possibilities in this library. To do this, we can take a page from combinatorial mathematics. Since we are adding in single cell rotatable entities, we now have a total of 30 entities and four directions. In the simplest case, we have a single cell, so we must choose one entity and one direction. If we calculate the total number of possibilities for this simple case, we must multiply the total entity combinations by the total direction combinations, which is 30 times 4 for a total of 120. If we pick a random value, we can then extract which entity was chosen by dividing by the total direction combinations and rotation by taking the remainder of that division. One thing you may have realized is this method will generate some duplicates when translated to factorial. For instance, the wooden chest is not rotatable, so for these values, the result will all be the same even though they are numerically distinct combinations. This is also true for the empty cell and any other non-rotatable entity, so there will be some duplicates. But that is a small price to pay to guarantee all possible factories are able to be generated. To expand this beyond a single cell, the math is all exactly the same. We just need to adjust the total combinations for both the entities and the directions. So if we expand to a 2x2 two two grid, we would have a total of 30 to the 4th total entity combinations and 4 to the 4th total direction combinations. Again, picking a random value, we can extract the entity value and rotation value in the same way as before. But this time we have an extra step of converting that value into the base of their corresponding attribute. Base 30 for entities and base 4 for the directions. Doing so tells us which entities to place and in what direction to place them. Taking a look in Factorio, we are starting to see some more interesting factories. If we attempt to include larger entities into this generation algorithm without any modifications, we quickly run into a problem. For example, let's take a look at a simple case involving just two entities, the wooden chest and a stone furnace. Let's say the grid has been converted into this state. Since placement order has not mattered with single cell entities, I've been placing entities from the top left to the bottom right. But this method is starting to reveal its flaws. Using this approach, the stone furnace would not be able to be placed since the chest is in the way. Should the wooden chest get priority just because it's more towards the top left, or should the furnace get priority since it's bigger? Well, after some thinking, I've decided we can have the best of both worlds, as long as we don't mind a few more duplicates. Instead of arbitrarily picking the placement order, we can just generate every possible placement order. In our example, this means having multiple values that place the chest first, and other values that place the furnace first. While this is technically overkill since we could get the furnace placed where we want it with a different value, this creates a better distribution of entity selection. Without this modification, larger entities are significantly less likely to be placed, since a smaller entity has likely already taken up their space, which leaves quite a few empty gaps. Now how can we modify the value generation to account for this? Well, we can do the exact same process as when we added rotation. We just need to multiply the total number of placement orders with our previous combination total. Luckily, the total number of placement orders is easy to calculate, and it's equal to the factorial of the number of cells. And to extract the placement order value, we can chain the same division and remainder process as before. To convert this extracted value into a placement order, we cannot convert it to a different base as we've done with the entity and rotation values. We must do something called factorial decomposition, which breaks the value down into parts based on factorials. This process will allow us to extract the nth lexicographical permutation of our placement order without generating all permutations. While an explanation of the math here is beyond the scope of this video, I'll leave a link to some resources in the description in case you're interested. 
Again, this method will generate many duplicates. For instance, in our example, there are 24 different placement orders for a 2x2 two two grid, and only two of them are visually distinct in Factorio. This number grows very fast with larger grids, but this modification was made to give larger entities a better chance and distribution of being placed down. Now that we've tackled every challenge with generating a factory, let's see the total number of possible factories using these methods. For the size of our factory, let's limit it to a single chunk, which is 32 by 32 cells. There are a total of 72 possible entities, including an empty space, to place in each cell in a total of four directions. So there are 1,024 total cells, 72 to the 1,024th possible entity combinations, and four to the 1,024 possible rotation combinations, and 1,024 factorial total permutations of placement order. This brings our total possible factories to this crazy number, which has 5,159 digits, and this is only for a single chunk. Now let's see some of these factories. Just like the Library of Babel, it would take an eternity, or some really good luck, to find a random arrangement that it resembles any kind of working factory. Almost as rare as finding a subscriber amongst all my viewers. Luckily for us, there's a way to persuade the random values. You might think searching the Library of Babel for a specific sequence of characters would require a complex algorithm, but the reality is much more simple. Let's use our five character library as an example. Say we are searching for the characters IT within our library. It would take way too long to iterate through every combination to find ones that contain those letters next to each other. So how can we approach this? Since we know how values are generated within the library, we can do something clever. We can begin by placing the letters IT in the first two positions and fill the rest with spaces. Then we can increment the last character to an A. And we can continue to increment the characters until we've exhausted all possible combinations with IT at the beginning. We can also shift IT to the right one position and go through the same process. And we can continue to shift to the right until we run out of room. And there we go. We've successfully searched every combination of five characters for ones containing IT. This is not technically searching, but it gives the correct results in a very deterministic way without needing to iterate through all possible combinations. This is essentially how the Library of Babel searches, but it displays the results in a more random pattern. The beauty here is we can use this idea to search for more useful factories. If we have a set of entities we want to search for, we can modify the randomly generated value to conform to our search. For entities in rotation, we can directly assign the entity and rotation values to each cell. For the placement order, we need to ensure that search entities are placed before anything else, so we can bump the placement of those cells to the front of the line. The rest of the cells will be filled with entities derived from the original random value. To add this functionality to Factorio, I created a separate search display. This display will need to be the same dimensions as the generated output display, but it can have entities placed inside. After filling the search display with your desired results, the subsequent generated factories will contain its contents. I've also added an entity to represent an empty space, and this can be placed so no entity will be generated for this cell. This way we can generate some more interesting factories. Now you may be wondering why I've been limiting the size of generation to a single chunk. This is because of the massive size of these numbers. After generating a random value, there's quite a bit of arithmetic to perform on thousands of digits, which takes a long time. Expanding to multiple chunks quickly increases the number to have tens and even hundreds of thousands of digits. Thus, the arithmetic takes even more time. I was able to significantly reduce the computation time with numerous optimizations, but another limitation is the speed of Lua, the programming language of factorial mods. If we graph the time it takes to generate a region by the size in cells, we can see that these methods do not scale well. At just a 2x2 two two chunk area, it takes over 80 seconds to generate. If we extrapolate the graph to a modest 10x10 10 10 chunk area, it would take about an hour and a half to generate. A 10x10 10 10 chunk area is not very big and probably wouldn't even fit most starter bases, but it is approaching the limit of reasonable computation time for my computer. Now let's see how many total possible factories there are for a 10x10 10 10 chunk area. Well, it can't even fit on the screen. 
so I'll page through it at about a thousand digits per frame of this video. This is a gigantic number. It has 720,428 digits, and I can't even put into words how massive it is. If this doesn't demonstrate the scale and depth of Factorio, I don't know what would. If we jump back to reality, I've set up a 48 by 48 tile area, which is about one and a half by one and a half chunks, and I was able to get this size generating in about 10 seconds. I think this is a reasonable amount of time, but you might see better results with a faster computer. While I've yet to see any semblance of a workable factory throughout this project, these are factory layouts that have probably never been seen and are likely to never be seen again. I've made this mod available on the mod portal so anyone can try this out themselves. I've set a limit on the maximum size of the display to 32, but that can be changed in the mod settings, so feel free to go nuts if your computer can handle it. There's also a way to import and export the value of a generation so you can share any interesting results. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching.